We've been counting down to the Iowa caucuses for weeks, and we know they kick off the presidential primary season. But what actually happens in Iowa? Here to explain the process is CBS News Elections Director Anthony Salvanto. Anthony, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. So just, you know, very basically here, in a nutshell, how does it work in oh, Iowa? Okay. Caucuses are meetings. They are not elections like regular elections. So what happens is people go into their caucus location. If you're a Republican, this is pretty straightforward. You go in, there's a ballot box, there's other folks there. You drop your vote into the ballot, in the box, they tally it up, they send it to the county party who counts them, and they tell you who wins. Now, for Democrats, it gets a little more complicated, okay? Democrats, they go in and they take first a count of who supports each of the candidates. They divide themselves into groups, but then if one of the candidates or two of the candidates don't get enough support, they're eliminated. And they regroup again now with the remaining candidates. Let's say in this case it's Clinton and Sanders. Now that's your vote. In between, they have a chance to argue or say, hey, come over here. No, come over to our side. You know, a couple of stragglers, maybe some uncommitted. So that's the meeting part of it. Mm. Now we get a vote out of this. Okay. So given all of that, yep. how do we watch on Monday then? What do we need to keep in mind? The key is that in Iowa, you're really competing for delegates. And delegates come from all over the state. So in the case of, let's say, the Democrats, right, you've got caucus locations all over. They have a set number of delegates who are available all over. And what a good candidate will try to do is pick up delegates from all over the place. There's only a certain amount that you can get from any one place or any one region. So that's why organization matters. Okay. So then does this give an advantage, this system, to any one candidate? You know, if you're looking at these different systems, is there, in some cases, an advantage for one candidate or another? Because this is a meeting that takes a little while. You don't just walk in and vote. You might have to argue. You might have to, to you know, get people to change your minds, etc. Because of that, it can take a while. Therefore, you've really got to have those committed voters. And committed voters turn out and spend that kind of time. A campaign with a good organization might be able to have an advantage. Hmm. You know, it's interesting, Elaine. It wasn't always like this. Yeah, why do we still do it this way? Yeah, what happened was Iowa designed this long process to give people a chance to choose their delegates to the national convention. They would have meetings and then more meetings and conventions and state conventions and county conventions. Well, that process took a long time and then politicians realized if they descended upon the caucuses, organized them and won them, they could get media attention out of it. So going back, this is really in the 70s when this started to happen, mm -hmm. hey, that worked. Somebody won the caucuses. They got national attention. And it took smaller candidates, more minor candidates, and put them on the map. Sooner or later, everybody started following suit, and now we have the tradition of the Iowa caucuses. And is that why Iowa matters so much, because of all the attention? Because it's first. Because it's first. All right, Anthony Salvanto, thank you so much. Thanks, Elaine.